Hey, it's Princess Havoc, your favorite BBW adult star and host of Causing Havoc, along with the fabulous Bobby Lucas, where we talk about anything and everything. Come follow the dopamine with us Sundays at noon, now with video, part of the Premium Smoke Room family and streaming exclusively on Anchor and Spotify. Run, don't walk to subscribe now. For only $4.99 a month, you get my show and for other great shows as well. See you there. Mwah. Hello? You know something. You broke the record. <laughs> for the quickest punch in of anyone that I've ever had on this show. Really? Dang. Yeah, actually. The link, you went right there. Usually it might be like five seconds. Five seconds. No, you was like, as soon as I said the link. I'm <laughs> quick. In there quick. So, hey, how you doing, Miss Lady? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing fine. How's your week been? Your day? It's, it's been good. I got to visit family for the holidays, get a break from uh, working. So it's been nice. Oh, yes. Yeah, so you had to work off them pounds of eating turkey, huh? Yeah. <laughs> we each had our own little Cornish game hen. So everyone was just picking Oh, my up. good. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. You got a lot of work to do. A lot of fucking to do. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Look, I'm just gonna tell you this now. It, it's crazy because I just I happen to just run across your profile, mm -hmm. and um, at first I thought you were doing something like that, right? Mm -hmm. Then I scroll down and okay, well, she got only fans. Okay, okay, she busted open. Wait, is it that Javon Jordan? What? what? <laughs> Don Prince? What? What? <laughs> Okay, okay, okay. I said, wait a second. How long you been in the business, boo? Uh, I just started doing full boy girl scenes at the end of February of this year. So, so this is like really your rookie year as far as full fledged porn star. It is because I'm not, yes. I'm not gonna call you a content creator. No, I'm not gonna do you that disjustice. I I earned my porn star badge when I did Bang Bros. Finally. Yeah. Oh, she did. Dang, bros. Oh, we had a lot to discuss, Miss Lady. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was just like, I was just walking on. I was like, okay, she influenced. No, she's a porn star. Okay. Uh, she on the West Coast. No, she's on the East Coast. Oh, oh my goodness. What the hell? <laughs> I'm, I'm like, everywhere. I'm from California, I but I used to live in Maryland. Damn. I've been in Florida a couple of times. I'd be everywhere. Hmm. Most definitely. I mean, so it's like you do your own content, you shoot for major companies. It's what's the thing you can say about this business before we get this thing started that you learned that um, you didn't know when you walked in? I didn't know how much more work than a regular job it was. Mm. That's the one thing I will say about this industry. It on the outside, especially to the fans, it seems like glitz and glamour. All you see is the five minutes to an hour of what's made. But behind the scenes, the amount of people that go into a scene, the amount of money that goes into a scene, the traveling, the maintenance, all of the coordinating and everything. And it's, it's just it's rewarding. It's fun. But it is a lot more work than I think anyone could ever anticipate until they're in the midst of it. That's how I like to start my podcast off, ladies and gentlemen. Our <laughs> 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 tickets, we can get this interview going, okay, baby? All right. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Smokers Lounge here on Anchor, the perfect app for anyone who's trying to start their own podcast career. All you got to do is download the Anchor app or go to anchor.fm and get yourself a profile today and start podcasting. I'm your host, Kavanaugh, the Southern Champ, a.k.a. the Porn Rap Star. Y'all know what it is. Find my porn links, my music links, as well as my social media links, all with one link, allmylinks.com backslash porn rap star also i'm proud to announce that we have two wonderful sponsors the first one is the facebook and ls community i'm talking about lsworld.com go there today and get yourself a profile and start your journey or continue your journey into the life of kink and the other one is eroticism magazine go to eroticismmagazine.com 
Get yourself a monthly subscription. Yeah, they drop magazines monthly of some of the sexiest ladies from around the world. You can either get it in paperback, mail to you, or you can get it digital. So go to RodeySizzleMagazine.com and check out the hot list. Also, we are proud member of the Black Podcasting Network. We're talking about multiple podcasts, giving you the black experience. Plus, while you at the site, experience some shopping from over 500 black own retailers and shops, giving you everything from fashion, beauty, health, jewelry, you name it, they got it. So go to shopgwdistrict.com, buy black, support black businesses, so we can create the wealth, you feel me? Also, every Monday night on K97FM, the official radio station for the porn community, I'm talking about Monday Night Smoke, 9 p.m. Eastern Central Standard, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 8 p.m. Central Standard Time, where you get to listen to me talk to a sexy lady or a sexy gent from the business of porn discussing the business of porn. So tune in and catch that smoke every Monday night. Now I'm going to sit back and let this sexy young lady introduce herself. Hi, guys. I'm the lovely Luna. Most definitely. So I, I, I'm looking at your uh, your timeline i said okay okay shorty shorty gets down she gets down <laughs> so, <laughs> I do. so so let's go at the beginning how did you start how did you fall into the world of sex work and then up to a point itself T- um, take us on again. okay so in ironically enough february of 2017 um I was working at Walmart, wasn't making enough, wanted to have a little bit of extra pocket cash. My friend told me about premium Snapchat. I was like, hmm, seems easy enough. I started doing that. Um, and I didn't really realize how many people would be interested in it, but it blew up on a, on a minor scale. So I was like, okay. And then a fan one time was like, why don't you post your videos somewhere they don't expire? And I was like, well, where am I supposed to do that? And so a fan actually is who taught me about um, the model payment program on Pornhub. Mm -hmm. So I started making videos for Pornhub. Um, That was pretty cool. But then I was like, okay, what else do I want to do? I started camming. After camming, I was like, okay, I need a new platform, something more interesting. So I went on Twitter to all the other girls that I knew that did premium and stuff like that. And I just searched, like, what other websites are they on? So I found, like... Um, many vids and only fans back before they were really like a big thing like they are now. And I was like, okay, why not? So I signed up for those, started using those. Those started mm-hmm. generating a little bit, did those as side hustles through working retail, food service, whatever. And then, um, last year in September, I was like, eh, it's the pandemic. I'm bored. There's nothing to do. I'm going to see if there's a strip club in my city. And I started dancing that was insanely fun, so liberating. I was extremely excited to finally say that I had been a stripper. It was insane. Um, and then- oh, Hold on, hold on, you going any further. Hmm? Tell me about stage. Tell me about it. Mm. I, I, because, because be it that okay, you said, because it's interesting because you didn't quickly hit each spectrum of the sex worker trade. Yeah. So let's stop for a sec, because this is a different level of shit. This is you dancing. This is you being seductive. This is you maybe doing a routine. You being engaging. Talk to me. It was very different with it being in, in front of an audience type of experience, um, mm-hmm. being as how everything else was on the phone or on the computer. It was very different having people watch me and say the same things to me in person that they would online. And then in the lap dance rooms, everyone would just be like, where have you been this whole time? Like, why haven't you been a dancer? I'm like, I don't even know what I'm doing. Like, I'm just getting up there and having fun with it. I'm excited to be here. I loved all the outfits, all the shoes, all the girls there were so welcoming. But something about being on stage just... I don't know, like, it felt like it activated me. It was just an amazing experience. And I'll never forget one time I did, I was doing a routine and I had seen this girl do some sort of a backflip somersault thing across the stage and like land with her head, or yeah, her head in some guy's lap. And I was like, that looks cool. I'm gonna see if I can try it. 
So I did it. And as I like looked up at the guy, he was like, oh my God, you're the girl on Pornhub. And I was like, <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's me. Hi. <laughs> so that was really cool. I was like, damn, I didn't realize that people like in my city had seen my videos because I was so small. Time yeah. Because I'll be to tell you, it's been plenty of moments in my town that I got stopped and it's like, yo, man, I just seen you, dude. You be laying that pipe to them girls, man. <laughs> I mean, mm-hmm. I'm just like, why are we having this conversation on the bus? I'm being called out. I was like, oh my God, you know who I am? That's crazy. But it was crazy good, though. It was. It was. It was a really good feeling. I got a million lap dances out of that guy that night. It was a very, very good <laughs> night for me. <laughs> he hadn't seen you on board. He was like, she's right here. Uh-huh. Let me indulge. This is perfect. <laughs> Uh, no, that was oh, a fun right. one. It uh, it inspired a passion for pole. I even got a pole for my own house. Mm. I'd be practicing in my spare time. Love it. Mm. Oh my goodness! So, eventually, porn. So, how did yes. you move into the actual boy girl scene side of things? Because I figured that probably a lot of videos you were doing was pretty much solo, for the mm-hmm. most part. You know, period, which yes. means you have an array of toys. So we'll uh, get yeah. to that in a moment. I actually had a full <laughs> one of the over the door shoe organizers full of sex toys. Ah, Everyone, man. every different kind of sex toy with its own pocket. Um, yeah, can even like when you do something, you go to the full tilt. So I'm pretty sure <laughs> I do. I nose dive into everything. <laughs> so a friend that I met at the strip club introduced me to a friend who had been getting requests to start in porn. She wasn't really sure about it. And then she finally did it one time. Her name's Anna Skye. Um, mm. And so she had gotten an invite to go do some scenes out in Florida and asked me and my friend Lindsay, like, hey, do you guys want to go? Like, I know you do OnlyFans. I'm sure your fans would like some boy girl <laughs> content. They've got some guys with some pretty good numbers. Like, let's go try it out. So my first porn experience was a content house. And the guys were absolutely awesome. The male talents, I mean, that was where I first shot with Don Prince. So that's probably the video that you saw. Um, It just, I don't know. I, I fell in love with it. The lights, camera, action of it all, the primping. We paid for a makeup artist to do our makeup all weekend, so I just felt mm-hmm. like a princess through the whole thing. Um, mm-hmm. And my fans reacted insanely to the difference in content, and I was like, okay, mm-hmm. this is, they had been bugging me for a while about longer videos, boy-girl videos, and I was like, okay, I'll finally give in. And, uh, at that first content house, I met Jonathan Jordan, and he was like, "You have a very mainstream look. Do you, would you mind if I sent your pictures yes, you to Bang Bros?" And I was like, "Would I mind, <laughs> sir? Like, go ahead, be my guest. I doubt they're gonna want me. Like, this is literally my second day shooting." Sure enough, three days later, he texted me, "This is the name and the number of the producer. Call him and tell him when you're free. They're gonna shoot you." And I was like, "What?" <laughs> oh, that was a moment for history, right there. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. I, I know your ego went ten. Like, hold the fuck up! I just I was started so fucking confused. on camera. I'm like, gonna be me? on Bang Brothers. I'm gonna be on Bang Brothers. Oh, I couldn't believe it, but we did. We set a date, and then um, Jonathan was actually throwing his own content house, and he was like, "Would you want to come and shoot your first gangbang?" And I was like. Mm, he was like, you know, I'll, it, it'll be good. It'll be fun. And then he was also my talent for Bang Bros. So I was like, can we do the Bang Bros scenes while I'm there for the content house? And he was like, sure, I got you. And I was like, okay, awesome. Thank you. So I went out to Florida for the second time at the end of April. So only three months after my very first shoot, I went and did my first gangbang and two scenes for Bang Bros. Mm. Yes. So, mm. so now we're about to get to the technical side of it. 
Now, when you did your first scene, mm -hmm. the house one. Tell me about how you know how your emotion state uh, walking into the shoot. Um, mm -hmm. Also, discussion of boundaries and what some of the things they did to help you relax and become comfortable to give your best self on that camera. Oof. I could feel it like it was yesterday. I was so nervous. And I was trying not to show that I was nervous, but I was so nervous. <laughs> I just, it finally set in where I was and what I was doing when I walked into that room. The lights were all set up. The photographer's getting his lens all, like, you know, it's just, I was like, whoa, this is a big step. Mm -hmm. But while I was in there, you know, they start off, every scene with like, let's talk about both actors, do's and don'ts, make sure you guys don't do anything to ruin the mood during set or make somebody uncomfortable. So we sat and talked about that, which I didn't even know was gonna be a thing. It, I, I wish it was a thing that like normal people did in normal sex. I wish a lot of stuff that went down in porn was normal things yeah. that normal people did for sex, honestly. Yeah. Because I mean, because boundaries is important. Because if if something hits a trigger, scene is done, dead. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you can't get that heat back. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Like seriously, you can't. You can't. So, and as for me personally, I have one thing that's very triggering for me. So like that was very comforting to me that we were able to talk about those things before anything ever happened. That way. I knew going into it, like, you know what my boundaries are, you know what I'm comfortable with, you know what you can do to make the scene better, and you know what you can do to make the scene end. So, like, at that point, it becomes a respect thing, and every talent that I've worked with so far has been respectful of said thing, and it's just, it's a very different experience than what I've had in my personal life, and I'm grateful to the industry for having set those standards to make sure, like, obviously, we want to give our fans some authentic experience ever. We can't do that if we're in the middle of a, you know, a flashback or if we're not into it yeah. because the person's doing the opposite of everything that turns us on. Mm. Like, it's nice to have that open communication. And to also... Um... Be it that it was your first time filming, also seeing how it ain't the same as we just fucking. It's because not. Because be it, you know what I'm saying, speak to that because a lot of times people don't realize it's a lot that we do on that set. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's a lot. It's a lot what we do on that set. You know, period. Man. From And what we have to keep in mind when we're filming. Mm. You know, period. So speak to that which you learned from that first scene, you know what I'm saying, just off, off of that? Just off of that, I figured out first and foremost, the, the paperwork. <laughs> the paperwork. Yeah. Uh, I would have never anticipated. I mean, and I guess if I had thought about it, I maybe had, I just, I was so new, I didn't know anything. So that was one thing that really was like, oh, okay, this is like professional, professional. Like, y'all want to make sure all your ducks are in a row. That's cool. Um, but then the other thing was just like the way that my male talent went about making sure that I was in the moment, that I was comfortable. Like he kind of let me, both him and the producer really kind of let me just take it moment by moment. We didn't have a lot of a plot line. He kind of just started talking to me, massaging me, mm -hmm. trying to get me like comfortable with the moment. And so mm -hmm. my first scene, probably, if I'm being honest, was my most authentic because it was just him allowing me to do whatever I was going to be comfortable getting through the scene doing. And it still ended up being super great. Like, of course, now I like to plan and theme certain things, and I've directed mm -hmm. a few of my own scenes. But mm -hmm. that one was very just like, this is your introduction. Make it something that's going to make you happy continuing to do this. And I really appreciated that. Yeah. Because it's like different from a lot of girls that's now walking in the game. You walked in running with big dogs. Let's keep it real. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, let's I, I mean I let me tell you about this show. 
I don't pull no punches. I don't talk, and, and I and I keep it one hundred. And that's how I keep it with everybody. I got more people to keep it with me. You know, Absolutely. period. You shot with Bane Brothers. Mm-hmm. You know, period. Um, this is a different level, bigger money. Speak to it when you got on that set. The differences from what you dealt with prior to that shoot, and plus how the previous shoot kind of prepared you for that. I'm pretty sure it kind of prepared you for Bane Brothers to begin with. It did. So in that content house span of time, I had done uh, six different scenes. And I would say I, I none of them are comparable to the Bang Bros experience. Um, and not in that they're any better or worse. It's just the level of professionalism that you switch into with mainstream is nothing on anything that a smaller company can do. It's just their ability to pay attention to every detail is so crazy. So my first shoot with Bang Bros, they told me to bring a bunch of outfits. I was like, okay, cool. I brought a bunch of different outfits. Brought like seven or nine different outfits. They went through all my clothes. They were like, we don't like any of these. They started pulling out totes. Of clothes <laughs> of various sizes. Hold on. Wait a second. Shit said, "Oh, this shit's garbage." Hey, go get, go get that, go I, get Rock C four. Swear to God. <laughs> so like, they decided on a shirt that I had brought that was a full outfit. They only liked the shirt. They gave me a different pair of leggings. They decided they wanted me in tennis shoes. They provided tennis shoes. They had brand new underwear, brand new bras. I was like, "Oh my God, these people are prepared for everything." That was not the end. Then. Oh, what was the next thing? So when you go to film, they have a cart of hygiene products, like a three or four tiered cart with different kinds of lube, coconut oil, baby oil, wipes, douches, just, I mean, anything that you could think of, paper towels, rags, anything that you would need in the midst of a shoot that you cannot run across the house for, they have it in this very convenient shelf on wheels. Like, it was just incredible i walked in they had a makeup artist ready to do my makeup right there um they also when they're doing the outfits they picked three different outfits for me to put on and then they took pictures of the front and back of me and sent them to home office for the outfit to be approved because they have to get approval for their outfits prior to shooting like it was just crazy um and then with their paperwork they start off with paperwork bunny ears, two forms of IDs, your contracts, they actually go in and print your full talent testing out themselves. They make you open it to all producers. They print it out themselves and they take a video of you signing it, agreeing to all of the information being true. Like they are to the T professional, but they're also so much fun though. You wouldn't think that someone that was that detail oriented or as some would call nitpicky mm-hmm. could be that fun but i shot with lou's crew in florida and they were just mm-hmm. hilarious i loved every minute of shooting with them for both scenes honestly but their their ability to be chill and joke and make it a light experience definitely helped with my nerves a lot because i was just standing there like who am i to be on a bang bro set like People probably work half their career to get called by Bang Bros, and I'm just here with, three months in. In a month? Bro, <laughs> bro, like, I was just... <laughs> that's a, I'm sorry, that's a hell of a rookie star, if you ask me. Man. <laughs> She's like, wait a second. I just went from a cocktail house to a studio. Damn. You know, it was a very different change of pace. I'm very grateful for it, though. I've I've been fortunate in this industry to run into people in very unsuspecting places that end up just <clears throat> being the most genuine and wonderful people that want to see the newcomers, you know, succeed in this. Because at a certain point, like, mm-hmm. we get old. We can't do this forever. Like, fucking is mm-hmm. fun. But there's a there's a yeah. line to be drawn. So a lot of the people that I've met that have been in this for a couple of years are just like, I know my face is going to be washed up eventually. I'm not trying to do this forever. But if I can give you the knowledge of what I have to get you to where I'm at, then I'm going to give it to you. 
and I didn't expect to find that many genuine people because I've been faced with some equally ungenuine people since I've started. Oh yeah, you, you it's the old saying you got to dig through shit to find gold sometimes. Mm -hmm. That's how it is. So now the way that you start and the way that people see you, it kind of set the bar for how you carry your own personal brand. You feel yes. me? So speak to how because you didn't came in that way, how much you got to keep that bar and stay on brand and how important it is. It's very important because a little ways into my career, I realized that although I'm not I'm not hating on content trade. It's how I started. It's how a lot of people get their bread and butter, do what you do. But the fact that somebody is excited to film with you and the fact that somebody has asked to film with you and the fact that mm -hmm. somebody is filmed with somebody that you know are not valid enough reasons to film with that person. And I only say that because I've been in some situations where it's like, oh, well, this scene should be fired because we get along as people. Incorrect. This scene should be fired because this content creator has been trying to hit me up for the last two years. Incorrect. You have to film with people that have your film style or at least your fucking style, something like it, it has to make sense. And I've done some things that don't make sense. And I'm only seeing that after the fact. And I'm like, OK, in order to maintain the brand or the look or the status that you have, Everything that you do has to make sense. If there's a point at which you downgrade, now you have to build back up. So mm -hmm. it's a little bit of a roller coaster when you're starting out because you'll get a lot of different advice from different people. But mm -hmm. the biggest thing to maintaining your own image is understanding that even if it's good advice and it's from a good source, you have to make it make sense to your brand because sometimes doing the things that are excelling for somebody else it's not your place and you could spend a lot of time spinning your wheels in the wrong direction thinking that you're going somewhere like well this worked for this person they told me to do it like okay but is it working for you and knowing when to step out of it when it's not mm -hmm. and I've had to do that a, a couple times since I've started yeah. and it, it's definitely at least in my eyes it's changed the perception of my brand just because I did go so quickly from like, oh, I just started in this to I'm doing mainstream, but then I haven't done another mainstream scene since then, which is at the fault of my own. It, it's not the company's, it's my own personal issues. But those kind of things do affect your brand when it's like someone sees you and they're like oh my god she blew up so quick like then you become kind of the one hit wonder you have to see, do a lot of see, work to come back from that you can see you have so many ways that you make money outside of doing content it's kind of it's it's yeah i can put it this way being a master of all trades is a good mm -hmm. thing in this business girl she who does it all has the most chance to make the most money you feel me? Very true. You, 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 you willing to work the clubs. You willing to do live cam, which I'm pretty sure you do. From seeing these pictures, you're a great model. So, because I'm enjoying these pictures that you got on your, the shower pictures and everything that you got on here. And see, you know how to work the camera for sure and stuff. But, uh, but even to the fact of filming, it's just about really just hooking up people that you can probably shoot content with or what have you. Mm -hmm. You know, but also we life can also get in the way of shit as well so <laughs> yeah <laughs> because i think that's one thing that fans don't get is that yes we do have a fucking life outside of this bruh i don't think they really truthfully understand that part i'd be like listen i understand that i look like that and act like that and talk like that on camera and to a certain extent i do use my online persona to be more authentic parts of myself that aren't exactly accepted in everyday society. But like, I still have a family to worry about. I still have a house to worry about. Like I just moved. Like I feel like sometimes they don't get that there's the parts, points in time at which we're not filming, we're being people, like real people that still have bills and problems and families and pets and stuff that they have to handle outside of your 
obsessional sexual needs. Like, I love what I do, but I think that might be one of the best things about content creators is that they're a lot more raw in who they are than Mm -hmm. porn used to be. And fans are finally starting to see, like, this is an, an actual person with a mind outside of their content. Yeah, because like I, because I, like one of the things I hear people say with you know fans want reality porn. I I bet the diff I said they want porn that's based in reality. It's a difference, you know. Period. Mm-hmm. But they want to follow you as a celebrity, you know. Period. That's why social media is important. That's why you know it's it's it kind of helps with the fan be able to stay stay in touch with you at the same time and humanizes you, mm-hmm. so that they see different. Because that's what it is now. Anyway, I mean Cardi B and all them. We you see we see the babies. We see the behind the scenes of this shit. You know that's just how the game's being played now. Yeah. You know it's even I mean, we show they get the best of both worlds now, which is pretty cool. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. just you know sometimes they can they can be a little much, but I love my fans. I call them lunatics because they act crazy about me. <laughs> they do. They're very it, like... It, it makes sense. What? I can't even lie. I did. I sat there and I, I put that together. I was like, listen, all the celebrities have names for their people. Yeah. You know, uh, Nicki Minaj calls her people Barbies. Justin Bieber had his believers. I was like, there's got to be something that I can make out of this. And I sat and wrote a bunch of things down and then I came upon lunatics and I was like, that's perfect. Cause once my fans get on my page, they become obsessed, which I love. It's honestly adorable to me. They get very like, oh my God, where have you been my whole life? Like messages all the time. It's crazy. Yeah, cause like I said, I mean, just, uh, <clears throat> because like I said, even with like the picture that you take, or what have you, you make sure to betray yourself as a sex symbol. Mm-hmm. You know, period. Because uh, there's a lot of things I think porn has lost, and that is that sex symbol. And mm-hmm. it, it feels good uh, to see ladies when they move, they move as a sex symbol. Speak to not investing in yourself, but also investing in your look. You feel what I'm mm-hmm. coming from? Yes. And, so, and the pride side of it. Oh, I don't know. It's just something about being able to take, especially now that I'm in the industry, like being able to take what I've earned and what I've done in this industry and put it back into the things that make me happy or make me feel beautiful or contribute to my progression as a person because i feel like Mm -hmm. investing in yourself uh as a whole look not just your physical body so like Mm -hmm. for me i like to have it doesn't exactly always have to be glamorous or designer things but i like to have nice things that show that i put time and effort into them and like since i started the industry i was able to buy a new car um Mm -hmm. pay off the last of my debts which i did all in one month I was insane. I didn't think I was going to be able to handle it all, but I did it. And then in addition to that, like I used to do um, hair as a kid and I wanted to make a career out of it. Never ended Mm -hmm. up doing anything with it. But now that I have the money and the reason to invest into like wigs and stuff like that, I taught myself Mm -hmm. how to install wigs and now I can wear all these different looks and, and create all these different kinds of, appearances of myself that portray the different thoughts that I have and the different moods that I'm in and and add to the photo shoots and the video shoots that I do and it just feels good like being able to watch the project come together and I'm like oh I was able to invest in you know nicer lingerie or a better venue even where I shoot my content is very important to me as well and I like yeah. it to look nice, to have a certain yeah. aesthetic to it. So it's yeah. good to be able to like, I made this and I can put it back in, even to the extent like, um, I wanna get plastic surgery, not anything drastic. Cause I already know mm. my fans are gonna flip out about it, but uh, <laughs> they do, they get very upset about it. 
But like, it's one of those things where it's like, I can afford to be exactly who I want to be, look exactly mm-hmm. how I want to look, portray what I want to portray and have the things go the places, have, have what I want in life. And I'm able to do it because the work that I put into this and the more you invest into yourself, the more your self-confidence grows up, your credit store starts going up, you're, you just glow different when you're able mm-hmm. to do things that bring your soul joy. Yeah, because like I said, just going down your your um your timeline. It's like even with probably the content that you're putting out, you make it a point for each scene to look different, mm-hmm. tell a different story. You know, period. Um, speak to the creativity and and coming up with scenes and catering the scene to the different situations of a different male talent you might work with or female talent. Oh my favorite part so when i first started content trade and people would be like what do you want to do i'd be like what (laughs) like i thought it was self-explanatory what we're doing and they'd be like no but like the theme the dialogue like you have creative liberties in this situation and i was like oh because i really didn't in my first couple scenes like the first content Mm -hmm. house we were in the producer was very I'm going to just say very controlling and leave it at that because that could be a whole different podcast. But um, anyway, I didn't know that we could be such a crucial part of our own planning. So mm-hmm. the first time me and two of my friends, we hosted our own content house, but it was very mm-hmm. lucrative. We only invited people that all three of us wanted to shoot with. That way it was beneficial for all three of us. So we had a bunch of people mm-hmm. come. And one of the things that I noticed was two of the male talents that were invited, they looked very similar. Like they both work out a lot, do yoga. They both have a certain physique to them. They look very similar. Like it just, in my mind, it sparked an idea. And I was like, okay, we're going to run with this. And so I used to be a supervisor at a retail establishment. I'll just say that because I don't want to get in trouble because I use their real uniforms. But anyway, uh, I still had one supervisor shirt and two employee shirts. So I asked the guys, I was like, okay, since we're going to be at this content house, I want to plan this boy, boy, girl threesome. And I want it to be set around a manager sleeping with her associate, but then another associate finding out and pretty much she gets double teamed to not get reported to HR. Um, (laughs) And so (laughs) they agreed to it. And I was super excited. Um, we got there and I was able to explain to the videographer, like we bought our, we got our own, own Airbnb, invited our own male talents, paid for our own producer. Like we had everything just so, cause we're very just organized people. If anything, little piece is out of order, it causes chaos for us. So it was really, really cool to be able to explain my vision to the talents and to the producer and be able to create something that just became an idea off the top of my head and watch it become a full scene. And then watching the raw footage, the before and afters, the BTS, and then seeing after my editor did the full edit, just being like, oh my God, like there was so many integral parts. Like I had my Apple watch, which you can talk on. So I had my friend call me from the other room and pretend to be HR like, hi, We got reports that there's some inappropriate, you know, situations going on between some of the associates. And we just wanted to see if you could hold some interviews with your employees and see if you can get to the bottom of it. And then it just it leads into all types of nonsense and fuckery. It was just amazing. I couldn't believe how much we're able to just really let our ideas run wild on camera. Mm. See, it's beautiful when you. uh bring forth a vision and it comes through perfectly. Mm. I hate I'm retired sometimes because God, I miss I miss the process. <laughs> I miss the process of making the scene the way it looked like afterwards. Mm-hmm. And you, damn, you're very good at this pole. I'm actually looking at your pole dance. <laughs> I said, damn, oh, she damn good at this shit. Mm. Thank you. See, yeah, you've been putting in some work. See that he said you got a pole in your house. Yes, I did. I got a house pull. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Now, this is the part of the show where I always say the dicks go limp and the pussy gets dry. We about to ask the hard business questions. 
So Oof, okay. When you said something about it earlier. Now everyone wants to flash, talk about how much money they make, but what they don't really want to talk about is the hell you gotta go through to make it. The mm-hmm. ups and down. One month is great. Next month, you like what the fuck? You know, pretty <laughs> so speak to the ups and down of the business, money wise, business wise, traffic wise, and what are some of the things that you do to help pick up the pace for sales and traffic? Oh, okay. So specifically with the online platforms, what we use to post and promote our content and bring it to the fans, it's just no telling what these platforms are up to on any given day. And what I mean by that is like little changes or major changes, like the payment removal process on Pornhub, that just wrecked so many things like i don't think people really understand what all major credit card companies pulling their contracts with pornhub really did to their models but Mm -hmm. you can't pay for anything anymore you can't tip the subscription things are not working the paid videos Mm -hmm. are not working granted yes we're still making our ad revenue but it doesn't touch direct video sales or Mm -hmm. X videos started their projected earnings. Like it seems like a great idea while they're assuming it for you and paying you out for mm-hmm. it. But what happens when they assume more than what you get that month and then they turn around and take money back out mm-hmm. or the clip stores changing their rules to where every time you post with a new performer, you have to have a front and back of their idea, a picture of them holding their ID, a model release form two, two, five, seven, like, all in a day these platforms will just change their full operation Mm -hmm. and for a lot of people granted yes we have ourselves on a lot of platforms but that's mostly to be convenient to the majority of people so that they don't Mm -hmm. have to go and create an account somewhere that they're not interested in being just to get our content but one of these platforms every month for every creator will play with their money in some way And it gets very stressful and it's like the amount of time that's put into these, the travel that gets put in, the thousands of dollars a year on talent testing, just all of these different, (laughs) all of these different components. Like I have had that blood draw stick in my arm so many times. I've had so many COVID tests, the amount of money we spend on plane tickets, like People look at us and be like, oh, she has 600 fans. She's making so much money. Like, okay, yeah, but you're not seeing the money that goes out to make this happen. Because it's a lot of money that goes out just as fast as it goes in. Because if you don't continue to invest in this industry, it won't continue to pay you the same way. Like, nobody recognizes that part. I'm like, okay, yeah, if you make 10000 this month, at least four to six of it is going back into plane rides, Ubers, rental cars, Airbnbs, paying videographers, paying for photo mm-hmm. shoots, paying for talent testing. We're women, so it's hair and mm-hmm. nails and makeup. And, you know, it, it's a lot, especially when you do it the content creator way. It's all on you. And then mm-hmm. OnlyFans, when they pulled their little we're going to get rid of you guys thing, a mm-hmm. lot of people left, the on, like a lot of fans and a lot of creators left the OnlyFans platform before they even had a chance to rescind that. So income and revenue gets lost for things that we have no control over and sometimes don't even come to fruition. And it's like, you gotta just, you have to learn to ride those waves. In those times, I personally, I'll see if there's a holiday coming up or some sort of event or something like that and I'll host a sale or if I know that there's been some sort of like gas prices just went up, mm-hmm. everybody just flew around for the holidays because the first year there's not a lot of travel bans. So like I did a Thanksgiving sale and I did a Black Friday sale. I wanted to give my fans a chance, you know, to get still what they want to get and have their little peace or their moment of peace in the midst of the stress of holidays but still make sure that I was gaining the income that I needed to because it's still holidays for me. So it's just one of those things you have to learn to adapt and overcome and you have to learn to do it quickly because you don't always get another chance to fill that gap. 
Yeah. Because the thing of it is, it was like I was listening to a lot of girls when that shit had with OnlyFans. Mm -hmm. And it's like I would tell you, you have your stuff on as many platforms as you can, but also work on having a standalone site. Because mm -hmm. the reason for it is that when this game became normalized, it made Visa and MasterCard um, become very more weary because more people was coming in. Mm -hmm. And the safeguards that was there and the gatekeepers that it wasn't there anymore. So that's how a lot of, you know, shenanigans coming in, you know, period. Because yeah. when you get to the point where you got like a Jimmy Smack million dollars and he ain't did nothing but with a six minute video. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> mm. And it made the game see. And 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 I and I always say this is devalue the porn business and devalue the um devalued the um the extent because it made it mm -hmm. to where anybody everybody could do it. Yeah. You know, and and, <clears throat> and and that's why like I said, but it is going to always struggle back to the porn star because at the end of the day, now where it used to be we did the point industry was dictated by what Hollywood did, the mainstream companies, NAS more so the amateurs. Ladies like you stand out even more now. Because <laughs> y'all doing it to a high level, what have you. So it's like, so when when you sit back and you go in and you take a look, how much to the numbers? How much you talk to your fans to know what works, what doesn't work, you know, or what have you? Or how much do you pay attention to your fans? Um, as much as I possibly can, I like to run polls, especially if I notice that like a certain style of video isn't being bought as much or a certain category of video isn't being watched as much. I'll ask my fans, like, what are you the most into? And I'll run polls from anywhere. Sometimes I'll do it for a week. Sometimes I'll do it for a month and I'll just kind of see like where it's at because obviously you know, we have a certain number of fans that will follow us indefinitely because they like us. But then we have other ones that come in just because we shot with a certain company and they want to see what the rest of our stuff is like. So mm -hmm. you're going to have a revolving door of people coming in and out. And it's very important to make sure that you're not just constantly assuming, OK, well, the first hundred fans just wanted BBC. OK, but two months down the line, even if you still only have 100 fans, odds are at least 20 to 60 of them are new people. Like you should probably mm -hmm. check and make sure that's still what they want because what if they want girl, girl videos? What if they want solo videos? What if they're really into gangbangs or trains? Like you need mm -hmm. to make sure that you're checking in on your fans, making sure that you know what they want, offering anything that they could want that you're comfortable doing, customs, live shows, whatever it may mm -hmm. be. Um, and I also, I do my OnlyFans pay-per-view but I send mm -hmm. out a variety of different stuff and I'm, I have it to where there's not the same thing or the same type of thing always going out at the same mm -hmm. time, because after a while they'll just get sick of it. And I want to make sure that there's a variety because some people are only into one thing. Like I really wasn't mm -hmm. that into porn before I started porn, but I only ever watched lesbian mm -hmm. porn. So if there's nothing but boy girl going out, eventually you lose that fan. <laughs> it's just what it is. Yeah, but see, but see, the thing of it is, is you have to do it all. Mm -hmm. Is that you don't leave any money on the table? Because I even say this, and 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 like I said, I keep it real on this show. A girl could do fetish for three years. At some point, she might have to fuck something. Because mm -hmm. the fan base will get bored after a while. And the one thing they don't get bored of is boy girl. And mm -hmm. when they won't it's a story with boy girl. You know, period. History tells that. You know, mm -hmm. and and because people want that storyline. They they want if you do the storyline so damn good that you this the fuck it might not even be 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. they, they thought it was 30 minutes. I mean, it's just that serious. And to me, like I said, what's missing across is, in which I want to ask you, which is more important to you, the quality of what you do or the quantity? The quality all day, every day. 
-hmm. if you have a fire video you can get 10,000 people to buy a fire video but if you have 10,000 mediocre videos at least half of them ain't getting bought that's just what it is yeah yeah because it's because the whole point of it is is that you want to make a video that they would invest in emotionally Mm -hmm. you know because i I remember i had this conversation with girls they said uh even with trailers they were saying trailers were too long uh, and, and the funniest argument well he might jack off after he didn't get his nut he ain't gonna want to buy it. I'm like, babe, you want him to jack off ten times because if he jacked off to that shit ten times, he's going to go buy that scene at some point because he's gonna mm-hmm. want to see the full tilt. You know, period. It's a, it's it's psychology. It's then I tell girls now, nah, you, you drop the same trailer almost. It's it's no different than how you see with TV. You know, period. It's about the marketing strategy and stuff like that. How much? Um, do you put how much market strategy when it comes to your promotion, especially online? A lot, honestly, more than a lot of other people would think of. Um, mm-hmm. But that's just because I'm very OCD, very nitpicky. I like everything to be a certain way. So I'll try mm-hmm. out new things. And like right now, I have someone, I've, I hired someone to run my OnlyFans for me, but it's somebody mm-hmm. that knows me very well. We've been friends for 13 years. So we talk about what goes out every day, um, the way that fans are talked to. If there's any conversation that's personal that pertains to just me and the fans, she'll leave it and be like, hey, this needs your specific attention. Um, really, she just, you know, I have her making sure that videos go out every day. But the most important thing that she had to take on when doing this is that I like to make a series of videos out of one video so you'll edit Mm. down and make the full length video that'll get sold in the dms and posted for sale on mini vids but then Mm. i also want um a five to six minute trailer for x videos because having the traction that x videos brings and using it for that clout chasing back and forth between the content creators is amazing because you could shoot with someone And they could be a fire talent, but nobody's really come across their page like that. You tag each other and now they get all of your viewers and they finally get the recognition that they need and vice versa. So I really like X videos for that. But then in addition to that, I need a minute long wall trailer because even though I send messages out in my DMs, people that subscribe need a reason to A, stay subscribed and B, to want to watch the videos that are going out. So I have a minute long trailer made for my OnlyFans wall. And then I turn around and have a 10 to 30 second trailer made for Twitter. That way I can use it to post and be like new videos are dropping. Make sure you subscribe. I use those trailers sometimes when I'm doing a sale on OnlyFans to advertise for it. And then I'll turn around and have a photo shoot made from that same video that's Instagram friendly because Instagram be on one all the time. I can't stand them. And then I'll post that picture on Instagram. So I make sure that by the time I've done one shoot, I have something that's multi-platform ready within a week. See, yeah, yeah, you put a lot of thought into your marketing. <laughs> mm-hmm. I that is the most, the most intricate description of marketing that anyone has gave me man or woman on this podcast. I must commend you. Thank you. Now I'm going to ask you this. Now you mentioned content trade. You know, we, we everyone had their quirks about it, what have you. All right. When it comes to guys, what do a guy have to bring to the table for Miss Luna to say, I would do a content trade for you? Content trade for you. First and foremost, brand-wise, it has to make sense. Um, so one of your platforms needs to be doing exponentially better than me. It needs to be something that is going to build me instantly that makes up for what I could have made off the scene. Um, especially cause women do trade secret, but women do make a lot more off the scenes than men do. So like yeah. you have to make that make sense financially. Um, I would say you need at least triple what I have on Instagram or Twitter or Mm -hmm. 
triple what I have on X videos for that to make sense for me. Um, Mm -hmm. In addition to that, your film style, if you're someone that does a lot of anal or likes to spit in girls' mouths, we're not going to be a good match for one another. (laughs) If you're someone that's really into like slow, sensual lovemaking type scenes, I can do it if it's absolutely necessary, but it's really Mm -hmm. not my forte of scene um so probably not if you're a person that's not okay with like light abuse in scenes probably not gonna work because my biggest turn-ons are pain infliction so if you're oh, so you like your hair pulled ass slap exactly yeah yeah like yeah i would like working with you i don't I, I don't see stars like i'm a looney tunes I, character you're not choking oh God, me I, I would enjoy working with you then <laughs> <laughs> i'm a dog so too. small so people look at me and they're just oh like oh, i don't want to do that and i'm like oh you don't have a choice in, in, in defense of many male talents because i've been in this position sometimes we can't help who is willing to work with us mm-hmm. okay um, in a lot of cases, for example, we like I had situations where girls see that I work with a lot of BBWs, and their first thing Holly is, Well, I might not fit what you shoot because I'm like, You act like I did this by design. Mm-hmm. These are the girls want to work with me, you know, period. Just like if there's a, 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 a male talent that only white girls work with, him. just so happens because none of the black girls gave him the time of day. So, mm-hmm. how do you differentiate? He can't give me what I need or let me check him out because maybe it's more to him than meets the eye. So for me, I like to go through, because I feel like all of us have a little bit of different stuff on different platforms. So mm-hmm. the fav- my favorite people that hit me up are the ones that have like a link tree or an all my links or something, because I'll go mm-hmm. to multiple platforms and I'll watch multiple videos to get an idea mm-hmm of kind of how you work and stuff like that but then also Mm -hmm. i go through social media to see if you filmed with anyone that i know because i'll just quickly hit them up and be like hey what was your experience with this person now i don't judge my decisions solely off of that just because not every person is compatible with the other so just because you had a good or a bad time with that person doesn't mean that i will have the same i'd just be curious about stuff like like we talked about in the beginning boundaries Mm. and respecting Mm. the do's and don'ts you know things Mm. that they're willing and unwilling to do on scene um Mm. and sometimes i will just kind of talk to the person and be like okay what are you thinking about doing like what would you like to create type of thing um sometimes it could just be as simple as locationary like i'm we're not close Mm. enough and neither one of us are in the place to just fly the other one Mm. out right now so Mm. it won't work you know space or time wise but it's just one of those things i have a pretty good discernment for who i can and cannot deal with Mm. i've (laughs) encountered a few in my time (laughs) that have flown under the radar unfortunately but for the most you your part, radar was I'm up for those. Good at just <laughs> gauging, especially if it's somewhere. If I'm already in a content house, I'll mm. know just based off being in your presence whether or not this is going to work, and I kind of will just dismiss myself from the request. Yeah, because is um, because one the scenes that you don't have that chemistry, the fans can tell. Mm-hmm. They can see it. I don't care if it's a girl on girl or it's a boy girl. You know, period. Um, so chemistry does have a lot to do, you know, period. Mm-hmm. But it's also that fine line of business and personal. And so, yes. um, and a lot of times it gets crossed. Like with me, I made it a point I would not fuck the talent off camera because I it in past in my early days of <laughs> when I first got a point, and I did that shit. It went left, and I said, "No, nah, I fucked up the money." So, speak to not on professionalism to the fact that something that you also said, just like y'all would go talk to someone that shot, producers would talk to each other, time would talk to each other. So, speak to pro- being professional on set and general, and and how far it would get you versus the other the other way. 
I personally have never been on the uh, fuck off camera side, per- mm. only because this <laughs> this industry as a whole is like anti rule number one for me, which is don't fuck your coworkers. Because I made that mistake yeah. once when I worked retail, and it did not go well. <laughs> did not go well at all. So, yeah, y'all won't get it all. Y'all won't get it all in the dress room. Huh? <laughs> No, I wasn't that wild back then. I was I was a lot more conservative at the time. But uh no, it's just it's one of those things where it's like, okay, well, my job is to fuck the coworkers, so that rule goes out the window, but maintaining a bit of professionalism where it's like you can have chemistry on camera, you can enjoy what you're doing. That's the whole reason for the do's and don'ts to make sure that you're getting a genuine experience on camera. But if you cross that line, I just I've I've watched a couple of people do it, and it seems as though once the line has been crossed, it does not matter with whom that information will spread. It will spread around, it will get around, and all of a sudden you will be the person at the content house that everybody wants to be in the mug of because they think that it's about to be something off camera. And it's like just because I did that with somebody that I had off-screen chem- chemistry with doesn't mean <laughs> that I'm just going to go around and sleep with everybody. Like, it becomes well, drama. You fuck, well, you fuck you. Exactly. You and, fuck just, and Oh, God. And then feelings start to get hurt. I realized really quickly in this industry that some of these people are in porn looking for love, and it's terrifying to me. I don't understand why or for what. But you will start I mean, hurting it, feelings. It, 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 I, I, I can tell you that now, yes. There's there's women that's in porn to find a man. There's men that the only reason why they're doing porn because they can't get pussy outside of porn. Oh, man. You know what I'm saying? Because I know with the content houses, yeah, I know the feelings get it intertwined because also the other thing about content house is you may not want to shoot with everyone in the house. Mm-hmm. So, and you got that delicate situation of it. The person come to you and be like, yo, then why don't we shoot? <laughs> um, mm-hmm. hey. It's a little awkward sometimes. I can't even front. <laughs> it's, uh, it's a little awkward sometimes, especially because like it could be for any number of reasons that you don't want to. And then it's just yeah. like, how do I explain to this person without upsetting them or hurting their feelings or ruining their libido to finish this job, this house? Like, And sometimes it's not even personal about you. It's just, I'm just not feeling it. And mm. it, some people take that very personally. And I feel bad, but it's also like, I don't take porn personally because i have a personal life so like i feel like the people that act like that have less of a personal life than they do a public life and Mm. their lives kind of revolve around this and i'm like okay then we're not equal on that on that portion see that that's why i said i could never do if if i was still in it i would not do a content house because me i'm the kind of person if i work with you i want I'm going to, whatever scenes I do, I'm going to carry it to you. And I'm going to want to do more than one. Mm -hmm. And two, also, because I'm a, I'm an uncle. I'm an uncle. I'm in my 40s. Mm -hmm. I have daughters and wife and everything. Fucking different Mm -hmm. dicks take a toll on the pussy versus Mm -hmm. fucking one dick for that weekend. Mm Mm-hmm. Which means that I can get more scenes out of her if it's just me and her versus I'm third man down. Because, you know what I'm saying? Because that's one thing that also I think us as men, we don't take into account. Mm. Is that, okay, you just fuck the 12 inch. <laughs> mm. This straight. <laughs> he's a little skinny, but he's, you know, he got some good. Then you got a 10 inch that is thick like Shane Diesel. Mm. <laughs> That's curved. <laughs> Hold on. That's just before. Hold on. This ain't a gangbang now. This is like you just did a, like a 30 minute scene with each of them, right? Mm-hmm. Then by the time you get to the third dude, okay, I don't need to say no more. You mm-hmm. feel what I'm saying? 
So that's the reason why, because I learned that from my sisters and then there was, you know what I'm saying, and, and family and being around women that when you doing different dudes like that, especially in a short time frame, it does take a toll on the coochie because it's different dicks. It's different dudes hitting it. You're not mm-hmm. allowing the pussy to get used to that dick. You feel me? That's the only yeah. reason why I would not do a content house because I don't want to be the third dude. That's it's just me. <laughs> I, I don't blame you because you're absolutely right. Like right on the nail about it. It just becomes, and like after a while, you, you get used to it mentally, but your body still is like, ma'am, is there some particular reason why you're doing this like this? And it just it was like, babe, can we just suck the dick for this lad? Man, and I did buy my last content house. I can't even lie. I told them you got one good boy girl out of me, and I can do yeah. some throat fucks, some blow bangs, a girl girl, whatever. But like all my scenes, I had two scenes a day, and it was a boy girl yeah. and a blowjob scene. Cause I just can't, I want my performance to be equal per scene, mm-hmm. and I cannot guarantee that two, three, four, five scenes into the day. Like, I'm just, I'm mm-hmm. not built like that. I want to be able to perform at peak performance every time. And after my second, third scene, I'm just like, do not touch me. Get away. <laughs> I'm done. I'm tapped out. I'm going to bed. Like, you know. Yeah, because because you got to pace yourself. Because even as a dude, because I mean, even in my heyday, I was able to knock out a whole bunch of scenes. It, mm-hmm. it was nothing. But still, you, you had to pace yourself because mm-hmm. the simple fact of, of energy. Plus, I always ask the girl, you know, how did she feel? You know, yeah. she's a little sore, you know, you know, look, if you want to, we can do. And plus, also, I try to make sure that we did fetish as well as boy girl. Where yeah. fetish that may not involve your, your coochie because fetish always sold, you know, yep. period. So, but like I said, that's the hardest part of. Like I said, when, when, when I look at like the content, I'm pretty sure that you have some girls that come in there or even guys that would sit there and be like, no, nah, I ain't shooting with you. You know, pretty, and I'm pretty sure Phyllis got hurt. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it be like that. It be like that. But yeah. at a certain point, you got to realize it's just it's business, business, baby. It's not yeah. personal. Yeah, because, because it might be down the line y'all working in. You know, are you willing to burn a bridge that you're not willing to, to cross? Exactly. Especially because there's a lot of people that I want to film with that I have yet to film with on a content trade tip because how we make our money is by publicizing that. But companies mm-hmm. are severely watching our social media, like constantly. Yeah. There is somebody from every company watching and waiting for the next person that they want to cast for one of their films. And Mm -hmm. one of the first pieces of advice I was given was like, there's certain things in this industry, there's certain people and there's certain scene types that are worth a lot of money that companies Mm -hmm. will choose not to cast you for because you've already done that scene type with that person that makes all that money and you did it for free. It's all over Mm -hmm. the internet already. If you got 50 million views on X videos of a gangbang with five of the most famous BBCs in the industry, very <laughs> unlikely that they're gonna call you and call pay you, you the fifteen hundred that they could pay somebody that hasn't done that. Yeah, it, it's it's certain videos. It, that's why I tell females the most smartest video you could do is just role play videos. Mm. Because unless it's how can I put this? You have to make a decision whether I am going to be strongly on making my own content, not worried about the paid gigs as much, or I want to have a medium, or I want to pay gigs more. Mm-hmm. Because that right there, what you just said, that shapes your brand and it also shapes the type of content that you put out. You know, period. Mm-hmm. A lot of girls didn't understand why we did a lot of role play because a lot of bigger companies do role play. Mm. You know, period. So if they see you doing a role play scene, it might make them want to get you because you're doing the same song to what they're doing. But mm. yeah, if it's a money making scene, oh hell yeah, no, nah, they you doing a DP. They looking for they're like, well, no, she already did a DP. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, uh, we we were gonna use that. <laughs> exactly. You're an installer idea. 
you know, period. But see, but that's the thing. It's it's but like I tell girls, it's really the paid gigs with the freak mob and all them. It's really just more so for cachet and exposure. Mm-hmm. And all happen to their broader fan base. Because yes. all the guys go just go Google your name after they seen it. And I'm pretty sure you get a lot of Googles. Yeah, I've had a lot of people be like, I saw that bang bro scene and be like, which one? <laughs> you said which one? <laughs> that, that, but see, but see, that's why I said also it's a good part is that uh, with gang, with Bang Bro, did they shoot multiple scenes or they just brought you back multiple times? No, they um, they shot me twice in one weekend. They were like, okay. we want you twice before you leave. Because I live all the way in California and I was out in Florida mm-hmm. for a couple of days. So yeah. they were like, nope, while you're already out here, we're going to capitalize on it. We want two scenes. I was like, absolutely. I'll be there. <clears throat> See, now what's so funny is everything that you were saying, right? That is how they did it back in the day. That was the old school. That how how you got the Bang Brothers video, you know what I'm saying? How it was done, you know, all that. It's just people don't realize it was a purpose to everything that was done was to mm. make the star look bigger than yes you know period and now it's that the video is bigger than the people mm. you know because like i said and even to the point that it's like like i like you could and you know what i'm talking about you go down it, it, it the twitter feed be never girls playing with a deal mm-hmm. <laughs> because mm-hmm. they figured out that that's the easiest way to get into the business or try to be into the business you know yes I get a million people a week. How do I get into porn? Where should I start? Who's the best agency? How do I get into Bang Bros? Does Freak Mob have an email? I'm like, hold on. Hold on. Like, I got to the point where I finally, I responded to somebody. I was like, you really want to know how to get into the industry? And I just, I listed it all out for them. I listed the number of things you have to pay for before you go into a scene, the things you have to worry about going into a scene, the different requirements that they have for male versus female talent, the process that you have to go through, the amount of paperwork that you have to sign, the amount of personal information that you have to give away, the whole long process that goes into it, the five to 10 hours on set. Like I really sat there and broke it down for someone and they were like, oh my God, like I, I, I just, I just wanted to figure out how y'all be making 20 bands on OnlyFans. That's it. And I was like, that's not getting into the porn business, bro. I'm going to tell you right now. As somebody that's done every avenue of sex work to Mm -hmm. date, that is not... You can make 20 bands on OnlyFans and never have been on an industry set. That's just you knowing how to market yourself and catering to the viral business. But like, you want to ask me how to become a porn star, it's a lot of work. It's about consistent See, that's the thing that I think they got portrayed and played. A lot of the girls, when they talk about how much money they made, it was that one time they made it at the time. Mm-hmm. Look at their consistency. They didn't, cons- they, Jimmy Smack didn't constantly made a million. He made that million one time. I doubt he ever see it again. Because me being in the business, I know that. Because the way yep. it fluctuates. You know, period. Because if you're not putting out equal that what got that million, you ain't seeing a million. Exactly. You know? And I think that's where girls it's it the biggest mistake was when girls start posting how much they made, it made it seem like, and then you know how chicks think. Let's keep it real. They sat there and looked, saw she was playing with a dildo, had her toes pointed. Mm-hmm. Knees up. <laughs> <laughs> that bitch, she made him. She made six figures doing just that. I look better than her. I got bigger tits than her. I got a fat ass. I got a better deal though. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, I got into it. And what it does is cheap as the business because, like I said, with the discounts, I hate it when they start doing that shit. You know, mm. when they Rome do what Romans do, I guess. You know, period. But it's kind of like that's why I said it's easy for people to fall into that lazy 
role because mm-hmm. of the way the game, you know, period. And it takes a lot of passion to do what you do. It does. It takes a lot of passion because you have to, I mean, I think the thing that people don't realize is like, yeah, you might have a better body or a prettier looking face, but like you don't know unless you subscribed and you paid attention, you don't know the kind of work that goes into that. Like those people are not the ones you may see an ad on Twitter that looks like it's just her playing with a dildo. But that's mm-hmm. a five second ad that gets auto posted by our platforms to keep money rolling in residual income. But like those people are putting in all kinds of work. They're renting out rooms at sex dungeons and they're doing full fetish scenes, things that you would call weird or disgusting or unconventional is the stuff that they're doing. They're doing full cosplay and role playing modes like they're. There's so much forethought that goes into this. The ones that make the most money invest the most time into their brand. And I think people really just try to run to their nearest sex shop and buy some handcuffs and be like, I'm into BDSM. No, you're not. (laughs) No, you're not. What are you talking about? (laughs) They could even tell you what the B, the D, and the cut and bruh and i just be like okay yes you with your fuzzy handcuffs you understand See. that bdsm is supposed to be slightly painful like no okay that's fine it's uh, you're doing whatever you you're even, doing you even understand it's more mental than visible <laughs> listen just, just that just, just that alone this thing figured out that the sub picks the dom but i don't even want to go there for that conversation today man they're not ready <laughs> <laughs> they have it's I mean, it's because, like I said, it's just the misconceptions, and then it's uh, and then social media just a pet, a pet, a pet, that just it enhances it. it. Yeah, perpetuates even worse. Because when you sit back and you see in Floyd Mayweather coming to the ring with OnlyFans, <laughs> you know, period, and then of course you see the celebrity jumping on it. So it's kind of like at the mm-hmm. end of the day, everybody wants to do what we do, but yet mm-hmm. they don't want to give us our props. That's been been the real one for me. It's it'd be my very own fans that are the most, you know, bought videos, most watched videos, comment on my things and tell me stuff like you shouldn't have kids. You're a porn star. They're going to be embarrassed by you. And I'm like, sir, you're the one that pushed my views up into the millions this week. Like, I'm so confused at who you think you're talking to right now. They don't have respect for what we do but they want to mm. do it and it's like okay yeah. but what you're not prepared for is that uncomfortable conversation with your friends and your family and when the public's looking at you yeah, like you you're jerking off sort of watching me. because of what you do for money <laughs> once you have to feel that energy coming off of other people then you might have a little bit more respect for what we do because at the end of the day it may seem all glitz and glamour on social media but you don't hear all the naysayers in our ear simply because we do what we do. Yeah, you're not ready for that conversation, though. Because I because I heard someone, <clears throat> excuse me, say in, in another conversation I had that uh, about kids. Because we hadn't heard that conversation before, and mm-hmm. um, to me, if one, if I ain't had kids yet, worry about. Two, mm. probably by the time the kids get old enough to even figure it out, they probably don't give a shit because they probably know mama's a freak. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm, I'm mama, saying. They, she, she, she on brand. What are you talking about? We, we know mama go to swinger parties. <laughs> we, I'm saying, like, when you grow up with six <laughs> siblings, you're going to understand right then and there. Yeah, she, she's a freak, guys. <laughs> mama's a freak. <laughs> And then, and then, and then they ain't gonna give a shit. They are gonna be like, "Yeah, I'm going to do a shoot." Oh, good. Can I get some Jordans when you finish? It's- exactly. Like can, can, my kids don't- aren't gonna. First of all, I would never raise children that are so close-minded about things. Also, yeah. I would never put my business in the face of my children. And if they find it somewhere, I'm gonna be honest with them. Be like, "Do you like this mortgage being paid? Do you like the internet being cut on for your Xbox?" Well, guess what? That video right there just paid me out two thousand dollars. So, what do you want to talk about today, son? Like, oh, be careful, oh, be careful, buddy. Are we going to the fair? Did we go to the fair, mom? 
Exactly. Be like, I heard, I heard you just got finished doing the shoot, boss. We go to the mall. Man. Shit, because I. I mean, but but I think people are just cynical, mm. and and it's kind of just like they just don't like I said before. It's normalized to watch, not normalized to be in. Mm. And and I think that to the other part of it is is that now a lot of people try to give knowledge on this game because spaces and plus my podcast, other people podcasts, what have you. And so it, now. If people want to know, now they have ways to find out. Mm-hmm. It's, it's no longer to be ignorant to it. Do you understand? Because it's just funny, like, when I sit back and I look at girls, you know what I'm saying, the different girls that have been in the business, mistakes they made, or what have you, even back in the day, it was they didn't focus on their own. Mm. Because even back in 2006, dude would tell me, don't bring no girls out here to California. No, tell them to get their own website. I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because like I said, even to the point, it's crazy as shit. It's, trust me, back in the day, it was it would, you would have stayed in California. You would have never made it to Florida. Because yeah. how many companies that was out there now? But now they're gone, you know? So, mm. so are you planning to go to any Exoticas? Because I know, I know the Ooh. East Coast wants you. <laughs> I know the East, East Coast, Coast won't you. <sighs> I yeah, I saw. I, I saw you, you work with Peter King. I did work with Peter King. That's one of the smoke buddies. That's my homie. I loved that experience. That was so much fun. Um, I was. I wanted to go to Exotica, but my schedule just got booked up. Mm-hmm. By the time it was getting time for that, I was just like, uh. Eh. I don't want to. I had about a thousand different people ask if I was going to Exotica. I was like, no, I'm not going to Exotica. <laughs> but next year for sure, next year for sure, I'm going to go to one. I just, I don't know. I kind of, I started into this so quickly and I didn't mm-hmm. realize how fast it was moving. And I got half a second to stop and really process and it all just caught up Mm. to me. And I was like, I think I just need a minute to breathe and really process. Mm. Like it was a massive career shift for me. Like I had always been at home working regular jobs. So like this is my first year being fully self-employed and I've been to six different states, 20 different cities. I've driven to and from Los Angeles and Las Vegas four different times. Like, it's been very busy and I was just like, I don't know if I have enough social interaction left in me to do a three day <laughs> event with a bunch of porn stars and have it just be on this high level. Like I feel like four or five content houses in a year was enough social interaction and yeah. I just needed a breather. But next year for sure, mm. I will be at Exotica. I might even have my own booth. We'll see. Well, I I have some some manifestos, some talents that I like to see you work with, but they're just me. Like I said, I gotta live. I'm retired, so I gotta live by curious through y'all. <laughs> well, just so out of curiosity, I, who are these talents? Because they might. Be I I would love to see you with my man Armistice. I think y'all two would look very good in the scene together. Okay. Um, definitely would love to see you hook up. With uh, my man Unique, uh, as well as I would like to see you with Billy Pilgrim. I think I would like to see what you and him would create. With who? Uh, his name is Billy Pilgrim. He's a white dude. He's in Atlanta. Billy he also Pilgrim. is a form. Yeah, yeah. I, I did an interview with him. See on the podcast. So you got to go check out his interview with the podcast. He's a former uh, stand-up comedian turned porn star. Okay. okay. <laughs> You know, but definitely Armistice because I think y'all two look good together. I it just it just seeing y'all two I just see y'all two, I can see y'all two together. And I think y'all be a fire scene by the way he works and the way you work. You know, period. So okay, yeah. okay. Let's see, see, it's funny. Armistice go be like, dude, what you doing? <laughs> <laughs> I'm putting you on the hot seat, buddy. I know you can do it. 
do it for me because I can't do it no goddamn more. I'm retired. <laughs> Shit. Tell everybody where they can find you, baby girl. All right. I am the lovely Luna on X videos, XOXO Luna on Pornhub, and Luna Gone Wild on OnlyFans. You can also follow me on Instagram, underscore the lovely Luna underscore, and Twitter, XO underscore lovely Luna. Now, of course, you know, I got to do the question, fellas. Can I count on you to be a smoke buddy? Because I want to bring you back for some more episodes. Because apparently you are, you a switch. You sound like a switch. You sound like a switch. You sound like you go both. You can be a dom or a sub, depending on the situation. So Just a little and bit. <laughs> so, so I want to bring you back so we can chop it up a couple episodes, talk about a few things. If you willing to come back, if you got the time. That would be awesome. I would love to. Most definitely. Yeah, because I, I bring ladies back and smoke buddies. You know, my platform is y'all platform. You feel me? If y'all come on here and talk in the event, if we do the event, they're going to be in the premium smoke room. You got to pay for all that, buddy. You know, period. <laughs> but, uh, but, you know what I'm saying? Bring you back to chop it up, talk business, talk adult film, talk whatever. You know what I'm saying? So I would love to bring you back to smoke buddies, seriously. Sounds great. I'm excited. And hopefully, Just let me know. And hopefully next year, somehow, somewhere, I get to meet you face to video podcast or two and do a photo shoot with you. Oh, yes. I would love it. Because I'm a photographer, so okay, I have many okay. talents, many talents. <laughs> you have to put your photo shoot skills to the test. Oh, and you'll love it. You'll love it. You'll love it. You'll love it. So, people. You know how we always end this. Life is a learning experience. What's the point of experience? You didn't learn anything. Smoke this over. Thank you for coming to the lounge, baby girl. Thank you. Black Wall Street is now online, baby. That's right. Visit the GW District. Shop the very best in men's and women's apparel and accessories, home decor, office supplies, books, pantry items, and so much more. The GW District is a retail marketplace of black-owned products and media. We're both veteran and black-owned, and we're bringing you the best online shopping experience with products made by small businesses. Come and experience the GW District difference today at Shop gwdistrict.com that's shop gwdistrict.com the gw district a retail marketplace of black owned products and media that's right that's right